Yo, what up, Grabby? Saibdi here with the champion guide for Jareg, an epic champion you will find in the Lizardman faction who can carry you from the early game all the way to the end game content. In this video, I want to tell you about this champion skills. I want to show you how I built him and where I still use him, where he helped me back in the day, and where he currently helps me today in raid in 2024. So let me scroll down. That's him right here. He's not new to raid. This champion has been around since I joined the game. He has always been there. And you, you normally find him in clan boss team back in those days, 2021, 2022. And this guy has been around for a long time. But now, where do you players use him these days in raid? We'll find out. But you should know this champion has a unique skill that makes him look almost like a legendary. Don't be fooled. This is a very unique skill and it's kind of a beat character um, design also. It almost fills up the screen. But he is definitely a lizard man. Always almost look like a um, dragon or an ancient um alien or something but he still has the tail though so he's definitely a lizard man for sure and he's one that you want to use in that faction he's best known in raid as that champion that places this a1 decrease attack it you would think that the 100 percent the way people hype up this decrease attack you would think it's a hundred percent it's not it's a 35 percent chance when it's not booked but when you spend books on it you get an extra 25 percent chance which takes it up to what a 60 percent chance of landing a decrease attack on the a1 it's legendaries that normally have a hundred percent chance of landing the decrease attack a1 epics usually have a 50 40 60 percent chance and he is one of those high and chance of landing a decrease attack on the a1 for two entire turns this is what is so huge about this champion for content like the clan boss where you cannot just survive those big hits without placing a consistent decrease attack this is not what i'll call consistent but this is as close as you can get you normally want to pair this decrease attack with somebody else in the team that i'll show you in my example who also does a similar decrease attack so if jared cannot place cannot place his somebody might have to go in there and place it so you don't want to rely on one champion for decrease attack when it's not a hundred percent you want two of them when it's like a 50 60 percent chance and he's one of those champions you'll find in that early game for that decrease attack consistent or almost consistent decrease attack on an A1. Now the second thing that Jareg is well known for is being an ally protection champion plus increased defense champion. He places ally protection and 60% increased defense buff on all allies including himself, <laughs> right? The ally protection of course won't be on himself but the increased defense, right? The increased defense should be on himself. We'll test that out in battle to see if it only places the increased defense in everybody else whether he gets it or not. If he doesn't place it on himself, it should say so, right? It normally says so in a sentence that this skill cannot be placed on him or he doesn't place it on himself. I'll test it in battle to see if he places this increased defense, but I know the ally protection does not place on himself. It goes to the other allies instead. So, I mean, the language does say it's buff on all allies for two turns. It doesn't say accept this champion. Anyways, that's going to be on a four-turn cooldown. Ally protection as we know it in raid, these days, you normally want them. Well, they are all on a three ton cooldown, also. The one person I wanted to check who is an MVP right now in that content is gonna be, um, for ally protection at least, it's gonna be, where is his name now? Toragi the Frog, ally protection. Three ton cooldown. So the new ally, ally protection champions, epics that are coming into raid, are getting ally protection for three ton cooldown right here, as you can see it. But it doesn't increase. It doesn't in include the increased defense though. So that's why this is maybe on a three turn cooldown. So I guess you could say Taragi does it better, but let's not just forget about that. Ally protection, even on a four turn cooldown, with the help of some other champion who can increase the duration of that ally protection, you would not mind that it's on a four turn cooldown, right? So that's it when you spend books on it. Just one book. Jarag is one of those few champions that doesn't have a lot of skills. It's only his A2 that has a cooldown of one. Which makes him very very good with one of those doom tower bosses that i also showcase and that's his passive right here that doesn't just place a continuous heal yeah that's all he does place 15 percent continuous heal buff on an ally for one turn whenever an ally loses 20 percent of their max hp in one hit so this passive has no cooldown that means whenever the boss or bosses hits you and you get one continuous heal they hit you again you get another continuous heal, you might have your allies might have to three continuous seals on them at a time because he just keeps placing it whenever they get hit and one of these continuous seals will always be keeping them alive. When Jarag is in the clan boss team, most of your allies will always have their HP in full so they don't always have to rely on their 
um war master or giant slayer hit to get that kill coming into them right so that's what he really really helps normally you don't want any sort of type of healing from clan boss you want the allies to keep themselves alive with alive with their um, skills but he just comes in there and helps them top it up so they don't get nuked by going too low you have an hp aura that you can use in the leader slot in all battles one of the biggest for an epic champion i've ever seen i've seen even legendary champions with an hp aura of 35 percent so you can see an epic coming up to 33 percent in all battles it doesn't just say in arena or clan boss or or in dungeons i mean it says in all content that means if you need direct to be your to be boosting your hp in some content you can put him in the leader slot but i prefer to go with increasing my defense in content like dungeons or clan boss right so that's why this aura would normally not be used except in content where you know your damage dealer need extra hp to help them nuke jarek obviously won't be found in the arena so you're not gonna be seeing me show this champion in that content he does have a high h base hp though because his damage is based on attack and what about this one? he doesn't hit in this one see what is all, what is he doing with all this big hp then maybe he's just keeping himself alive as we see it in the game all right let me get over to my um, champion build and show you how i built this champion or how it has been helping me in the early game now for me to show you this champion build i did not revamp him especially for this video this build that i was using for jarek is what i used to help me beat doom tower at least that's the content i built him for for my account i'll show you the content too that's him right here lifesteal jarek is one of those champions that you see both mostly in the early game and most end game players by the time you get to ultra nightmare get to beating um what do you call it now even end game content basically you will not need this champion anymore he kind of falls off because you by then you have legendary options that you know does it better that does ally protection better that does decrease attack better that does heal him better you might not need him anymore in that late late game four years in but in the early game when you're just starting clan boss lifesteal so whenever i put out this build i show you a early game build and then an end game build for jarek out saving in an end game he deserves to be in a lifesteal set remember his a2 does not hit he does not have any healing coming in there from the a2 it's only his a1 that does the hits and that's how he's keeping himself alive with lifesteal i guess you could make an um an argument for this set regen set or immortal sets that boost up his even more hp to keep him alive but I just think since it's the best build for clan boss, best build for Doom Tower, life still works in those two content. That's it. Of course, this champion will also work in dungeons. Therefore, life still is also functional that it can be used in that content. That's the only artifact recommendation I would say you should put on your Jarek. I know new artifacts are coming out every day. So for endgame players who have the flex sets that they just want to go crazy with, you could put him in def and defiant sets, right? That one that you know reduces the damage he takes from AoE attack, right? There's also another one that gives him healing better than life steal. Where is it? Let me see if I can find it. New sets are coming up every day. So that's one that might be useful for him. Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking for that set. Not deflection. It gives him some healing. I can't find the set now. Don't I have it? It's not deflection, it's not res resilience blood test that's what i was looking for so this is an upgrade to lifesteal i don't have sufficient enough this one gives him up so the same or better healing than lifesteal does well it does do the same healing but it at 30 and 12 percent crit for him so my it's not even crit cut on my account so this might be the end game recommendation while the lifesteal will be the early game recommendation so whatever we which one you have the better stats in put him in this in this so I'm going live still with two random sets that gives me speed right here on the boots and HP on the globe. This is not a champion I want to go crit damage on the globe for. I'm not building him for damage. Although with his mastery, he will keep himself alive. He has defense on the chest. I was looking for um, speed and resistance substats. HP and, and defense and resistance. So I'm not tr even trying to go super, super fast on this champion. And speed again and crit accuracy he does need accuracy to land that decrease attack consistently well so if you don't have enough accuracy he will not land it that's why i went with accuracy on the banner right here you can see he's still going for more hp and, and speed stats 
And then on the amulet, you will not see crit damage on the amulet here, over here. You can go crit rate on the glove and maybe defense right here. Maybe 100% crit might be awesome. 100% crit is always good on any champion. But I decided to sacrifice all that crit and focus on something else, which is defense. Defense with triple roll of defense. That's an amazing roll right here. So total stats you find on my Jarek. Oh, let's not forget that revenge. Um, revenge set is good for him to help him retaliate and go in there and use his A1 even when it's not his turn to get him back to full. Total stat you find on my Jareg is going to be over 70k HP, over 4,000 defense. Clan boss champions in general needs to be above 3,500 defense, right? As just a bare minimum for Nightmare, Nightmare to Ultra Nightmare, 3,005, 3,000 defense. But I went overboard right here because he is the one that places ally protection. So he should get higher defense than others who are just taking less damage, right? So check out his accuracy. I went over 373 and I'll tell you why. This accuracy is needed for content like the Eternal Dragon, where this champion scores a whole 5 star rating on Hellhead's website where you can see the ratings of champions depending on what, what content you want to use them in. He has a 5 star in that content. Why? Because that content <laughs> kind of reduces the cooldown of your skills and Jarek has only one skill that has a cooldown, which is the A2. So the boss doesn't really benefit a lot by reducing the cooldown of Jareg. And he has some resistance in there to make sure it doesn't happen or something. So that's why he's highly rated in that Eternal Dragon. Check out his uh, mastery options that I put on him. He's a normal clan boss champion masteries. For clan boss though, you most likely want to go towards this defense tree and select this more counter attack, counter attack right here, distribution and counter attack from deterrence. That's how you really want to go for clan boss. But if you don't have enough accuracy, like I wanted more accuracy for Doom Tower content, that's why I went towards the support tree. And remember, by selecting this accuracy tree, Master Hexa will um, has a 30% chance of extending the duration of that decreased attack. So instead of decreased attack for two turns, sometimes Jarek will place that decreased attack for an entire three turns. That's what I'm hoping to achieve by going to Master Hexa. And of course, this um, Sniper Mastery will have a chance. Yes, it will increase the um, chance that he places that decree attack. So from a 60% chance that we saw from the skill, because of I selected this Sniper, it now increased the chance of placing any debuff from skills or artifact by 5%, which will boost my chance of placing that decree attack to a 65%. So depending on what is more, you know, worth it for you, more accuracy, more chances of placing degree attacks is 5%, 5% more chance or multiple hits. The more multiple hits you get, maybe the more decreased attack you place for the A1. You have to choose. Check out lhits.com for other mastery recommendations. This is not the only one that you will find out there for Jareg. But I've even seen some Jareg going towards defense and support. But I need him to be in this um, War Master Mastery because of that's how he gets his healing off. All right. Now it's time for me to show you his blessing. Cruelty is the blessing that you normally have in clan boss, in dungeons content. But remember, if somebody in your team or two people already have cruelty, he doesn't also need to be in cruelty. You, you could go towards a different blessing that will maybe boost the aura of your leader champion like commanding presence or something like that. All right. I've done enough talking, it's time for me to test Jarek in the one content that I know every player in the early game will use him for. I'm not talking about faction wars, I'm not talking about um, dragon or anything, that's standard, right? He will keep your players alive in that content. I'm talking about clan boss. So that's the only test that I'll be doing right here to showcase what this champion can really do for a team. I'll test out the nightmare team, I'll not run it all the way to the end. I just want to see this champion in action and explain a little bit what he might be helping you do for your team. To help demonstrate that, I've put together this maybe beginner-friendly type of team right here. So I can see, um, what's her name, right? Sepoka Sentinel. Also a fellow Decree Attack Champion right here. She has it on a 40% chance. When booked, it goes up to a 60% chance, just like Jareg. So they will be taking turns to make sure the boss always has Decreased Attack on him. Whether it's his first turn, second turn, or third turn. We want that degree attack all the time on that boss so we take less damage and survive longer. She also comes with increased defense though so you might not maybe not want to run both of them but the main reason why she's in the team is because she blocks the buff, not because of the increased defense. So if you do not have her, you can always put your Tyrell in here 
increased defense, I mean the defensive order because of Terrell, and then Jareg and Terrell can just go in there. So let me see who else. Or maybe I just replace her with Terrell instead. Just to make this one a fair fight. I don't want her placing increased defense when Jareg is already doing it for us right here. Where can I find my Terrell? Epics. Early game champions right here. I don't want to put crazy legendaries. That's a Terrell right here. He helps in the early game clan boss also with the defensive order of 25%. All right, now it's a fair fight. Decrease attack is what Terrell is bringing. Decrease defense out there also. I missed that debuff when I was preparing this team. I'm not going to run it all the way to the end. I'm not going to run quick battle also. I just want to see a little bit of what this Jarek can do in battle. Take note, I'm bringing a Skull Crusher in there because double ally protection is one of the ways to build a killable team when you're not yet having your Manita, your Painkeeper, your Demeter, your Helicat. This is how you normally want to take down the clan boss. Single ally protection is fine. Double ally protection is better. Your poison damage, your HP bond champion, your decreased attack, your increased defense, your decreased defense. It seems like all everything is covered. Well, I'm still gonna get stunned. <laughs> That's because I took took away Sepulka Sentinel. I've started a battle with the Geomancer's HP bond as usual. Terrell will go in there with his AoE. Why? Because we have Jarek, uh, what's his name? Jarek to do his A1 decrease attack. That's the number one reason why he's there. 65% chance it landed. I'll go in there with my poison um, activation champion right here. Now, when you're running two ally protection champions, you have to decide who starts first. I don't want to start this counter attack at this turn. I want Jarek to be the second champion that places his own. Remove this buff that the boss placing on himself. I'm just explaining a little bit. Normally, you want to run this on full auto. Decrease attack. So you have two champions doing it. Either Terrell does it or Jarek does it. Now it's time for him to use his increased defense because we're about to get the big nuke from the boss. This second AoE from the boss is the most difficult one to survive. That's it. It's so painful. And he comes in there and helps us survive it. So why I'm putting it in this turn is because my score crusher is, put, is going to put it on the first turn. Talking about his counter attack. Not now. The next turn. You got to make sure this type of uh, tunes are speed tuned. You don't want to just put a random champion in here and use whatever skills they will want to use at any time. I hope my ally protection is still available. Yes, I think it's still available. Even if he got stunned. Decrease attack. Fine. Jereg also goes to decrease attack. We always have it there. All right, now it's time for me to put ally protection from Skull Crusher, A1 from Geo, and can now just put it on auto and see what happens. Hopefully, Jarek will still put out his own ally protection, even if we already have one right here. He did not. <laughs> he went with his A1 instead. Maybe it was not available. So now I don't want to, him to place it. He placed it at the wrong time. Anyways, this is not a speed tune team. I just wanted to showcase a little bit what this champion does. I'm waiting for us to take a little bit of more damage so we can see the healing. We want to see the passive. That's the only thing we've not seen yet from Jarek. That passive that he's going to place on somebody who takes too much damage. 20% of their health disappears and it places that passive healing. Let's let the run run a little bit and see whether we'll take some damage. Enough for us to get that healing from Jarek. He has to be 20% damage on one hit. We have a lot of ally protection champions going in right here. Maybe we will not get that kind of damage from this boss. Except he begins to nuke us extremely hard. As long as we have decreased attack going in right we might not get that type of damage from the boss. Alright, let's just wait and see when it happens I can end the battle. I'm hoping it's Core Crusher that will take the will be the first to get the first to get that healing from Jarek. Not quite. Still waiting for it. I want to see the healing. Although you normally don't need it at this stage, you want to you want it to show up when it's on like almost to the turn 20, turn 30. Now this is still turn 12, so we are not yet there for our minimum damage. Almost. Cock Crusher is getting damage from all sources, but he's not getting the healing from Jarek. What's happening? Come on, Jarek, heal Skull Crusher with your passive. Nope. Still not got it. Don't let him die like that, Jarek. You're here to keep him alive. Obviously, he can't keep himself alive with his A1. 
He got stunned. See? His A1 is not enough to keep him alive. That's why you're supposed to help him. Boom, boom. Still no healing from Jarek. What's happening? Are you waiting for him to die before you heal him? Jarek is disappointing me right now. I'm talking about the passive that is supposed to place heal. Um, what do you call that in now? Increase healing. I'm not seeing it happen. Well, maybe somebody else will take damage and then it happens for Nascar Crusher will go down because Jarek failed him. Damn. Jarek was supposed to play some passive healing on us, but it didn't work out. There are conditions. Maybe the amount of damage we took wasn't enough for him to place it. Conditions to place it were not met. Down goes my champion. Everybody is dying. We are not seeing one healing so far in this battle. Maybe I brought increased defense. Maybe I brought ally protection. That's why this was not. We are not seeing the healing that we're expecting. But if one person takes twenty percent of damage, that's it. I said it turn twenty. That's what we're waiting for. So now we're beginning to take much damage from the boss. And every time a champion gets hit like that, they will get that healing. The boss got a bunch of weak hits. Check out, it's about to happen again. Every time we will get that healing. So, where was this healing when Skull Crusher needed it though? Even on the stun attack, we will still, that champion will still get that um, healing buff placed on them by Jarek. No cooldown. It will happen every time. You see how that's getting their HP back to full? Getting their HP right back to full. Anyways, I'm going to end this battle. I'm not, I'm not accepting this <laughs> run right here. I'll end it. That's what I wanted to showcase for this champion. He is one champion you do not want to miss for that de uh, decreased attack on an A1 and this ally protection that it brings. You might not have a Skull Crusher. You might not have a Turagi. He can be your only ally protection champion. Make sure you speed tune the team using at the right time so he doesn't, you know, get himself killed, right? Because ally protections can die easily from all the protection they are giving to other allies. Make sure you build them tanky, high defense, high HP. And yeah, a lot to know from your experience where you still use your Jareg. I can't end this battle right now to show you, but I use my Jarek personally in this current build in one of those Eternal Dragon, like I said, because of his skills that are just few, right? Just one that has chance of going to on cooldown. That Eternal Dragon does not benefit so much from Jarek. Another champion that I know is Vrask, who has a few skills that a boss cannot put on cooldown. Champions like that are 5 star rated in that Eternal Dragon, so if you're not building for the clan boss, remember to use Jarek in that Eternal Dragon boss to make it easier for yourself degree attack consistently can keep you alive in that boss also remember faction wars Jarek is also an mvp that you cannot avoid building for that um, lizard man faction even if you already have a Razen helping you he comes in there to place that increased defense and ally protection on all your allies all right i'll end it right here i just checked my archive to see that i've not done a guide on this champion and i overlooked it all this time i decided to bring it to you right now and hopefully you guys enjoy this one especially for newer players building teams for the clan boss building teams for dungeons decrease attack consistently in ice golem decrease attack consistently in clan boss um dragon every boss needs decrease attack to be consistently except emus where you want to be careful when you place that decrease attack on him i'll end it right here let me know in the comment below which champion i should take a look at next and i'll be able to put a guide on about them or a spotlight in the next video See you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more daily raid content. Let me know in 2024 where you still use a Jareg. Later, guys.